Hi Simmers. Hey everyone. Welcome to Make 2. Normally we bring you Sims Free Play, but today, SimCity Build It. I'm not going to do a Let's Play, but I am going to do a review. And you've come at a wonderful time of day, because wow. I think the sun is just about to set. Look you've at these, all of that. Yeah, lovely colours, the lights have just gone on. Wow, wow. Look this down at the water. A very pretty game. Yeah, the buttery smooth graphics and beautiful lighting really is a, a real highlight and joy. Even though it's a little late, you can see the moonlight starlight reflecting off. I think that might be beach. You can even see the waves coming up here. Yeah. The water and lighting really does it for me. But let's take a look at these buildings, which also look really nice. They're a little bit flat, but you do get reflections in the daytime. You'll see that at some point. Days are pretty quick here in Sim City. So unlike city management games that I used to play as a kid and still play a little bit when I can now, this has more in common in my view with Farmville and a little bit Sims free play. It's, there is that city management aspect to make everything run, but a lot of it is focused on creating things that let you upgrade your buildings and earning and spending in-game money with a heavy skew towards encouraging you to buy that in-game currency. There's three different types. You can see in the top of the screen, there's simoleons, which I have 20,000 of, and that's what you use for buying new factories or stores or solar-powered plants or water storage, those kind of things. There's Sims Cash, the one beneath that, which I only have 94. I've earned that over the course of a week. There's no way of earning extra ones other than by getting in-game achievements like having your town reach 50,000 and then you earn two or three. But that speeds things up by each cat thing of cash would speed up a task by one to two minutes, as opposed to life points in Sims Replay, which speeds things up by an hour. The bottom one here, which I have four of, are keys. And they're for building special city service buildings, uh, and you get them by selling things at the docks, which are... Uh, down here, ship comes every so often, you can fill it up with some of the goods you've made, and then you make one of these keys. Now all of this leads to, as you can see in the top of the screen, a population of 65,000, happiness of 98, and I'm at level 13. Uh, so there's obviously a way to go on people and levels, but 98% is pretty good going. Uh, and I've been pretty careful this time to keep everybody happy the whole time, which requires careful management, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. But that's the basics of the game. You have the town, you manage it, you have your towers, your city blocks, and you upgrade them, and you make some money and spend some money. So let's get into the details of how you actually get to accomplish all those things, earn money, build buildings. Down here you have my factory zone. You can see I've been making some steel girders that I can collect. Each factory can create a number of things at once, depending on how much money you pay. You can see I can create metal, I can create wood, plastic, seeds, minerals, and chemicals. And at some point in the future, textiles. All of these take a different amount of time to build, but these are your raw materials that you can use in the game. Next, you have your stores which can take those raw materials and turn them into complex, different items. So you can create bricks from minerals, wood planks from wood, nails from iron, etc. And there are different stores that are unlocked at different stages of the game, which you can use the, raw material, the new raw materials to create new items. And as the game progresses, you, should be, you will need to create various numbers of these different, more complex items. Why? Because if you want to upgrade a building, you're going to need exactly those sorts of materials. So here, to upgrade this house or this building site, it'll get me 52 more people, a bunch of cash, a bunch of experience. It'll cost me some plastic, a measuring tape which is made of plastic, metal, uh, plastic and metal, and some minerals. So if I drag that on and let go, you'll see that house be built. Wow. Now, while that's going with the crane... Look at that. Let's start another one. Oh, no, it's done that super quick. So this is, you know, the very first home for just 
a few little people in a, is that a trailer? A little mini yeah, trailer park? Yeah, that looks like a trailer park. <laughs> yeah. And as we get down into the city, you can see all these cars going around. Oh, you can see people walking on the sidewalks. Yeah, you can see a little person there going up the street. Let's build this other building, which is a nicer condominium, condominium thing. Also shouldn't take that long to build. Yeah, I really love how the scaffolding rises as the crane rises. Yeah. It's sort of like a mystery behind this dark curtain, what you're going to get. <laughs> Finally, here we have it. Wow, that's really pretty. It's a nice really building. Yeah. You can see the sunlight reflecting off the windows. So I rotate it around. I think this has, there's, I think, well, look at all those people are happy with the new building. I think there's six different levels of building. And I think this is maybe four or five. There's maybe one more level to go. So you can see my original part of the city. These are all as big as they can be. There's several different ones. And these buildings just come at random? Like you can't decide what it's going to yeah, look like? Yeah, exactly. It would be nice if you could design it. Like it, if you could even spending in-game currency to change the shape or design or add a helipad or I don't know, add a gargoyle on top. It would be nice if they had some customization, but... If you click on them, all you get is <laughs> some views. All of these people are happy, and it gives you the name. You can't edit the name either. And so it is quite restrictive. These things that are popping up are the thought bubbles of your sims. And if you click on them, oh, we've got a, we've got a problem over here. You see this? So much traffic, we need better roads. If you look over on the right, you see this sign with an exclamation mark means I have to upgrade a road. Now it shows you the roads in red that need upgrading. That's because I just finished building this building. There's now more people, so I need to upgrade the road. So that's done. Everyone should be happy again. So what are these things spinning right here? That's a great question. So we've talked about the buildings and how you upgrade things, but key to the city in all of these simulation games is the key services that make the city run. So these are actually wind power plants. So you see the view here, you can see the yellow pumping out all the electricity around the entire city. The factories and stores don't need them but all the residences do. This is another really beautiful graphic. I think it's similar to how they do it in SimCity, whatever the latest SimCity is. For the PC. Yeah, for the PC, not for the tablets. That's really nicely done. You can see at the top here, power capacity is 34, demand is 27. So because I'm in the green, everyone's happy. If that were to fall in the red, if I didn't have enough power plants, Sims would get unhappy and start abandoning buildings. Water works in a very similar way. These pretty blue lines flowing out from these four water towers I have here, going all the way around the city. Next is sewage. Now, sewage flows obviously out from the apartment buildings down towards the sewage plant. Now, I don't know what would happen if you had two sewage plants. Currently, I've only got one. And you can see my capacity is at 28, my demand's at 27, so pretty soon I will have to build a new one. And I can see how that would affect the flow of the sewage. This has an area of brown around it, which represents the dirty radius from the pollution. The factories have the same, and that's why I've kept them all close together, to minimize the overall pollution area and the effect that might have on the town. You can see the... This is uh, a pretty gross effect here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fascinating as well, seeing no, it roll not around. Really, and get... Not really fascinating. Yeah. So the next main service is waste management, which I'm not, I'm, well, I'm almost at level 14. If I did one more little thing, I'd have to put in a waste facility. The cheapest one is 6,000, and that is a key part of the game. You've always got to be looking ahead. I've currently got 19,000 uh, simoleons left, but if I didn't have enough to buy enough waste management for the entire city, very quickly, all my sims would get super unhappy and abandon the building. So unlike in SimCity, where you can kind of just get on with it and do it, because the constraint on cash is so strong, because they want you to spend money in-game, you've got to be really careful and think ahead. Now, that's all the types of services that are based on things that flow. 
But there's another one which is area coverage. So things like fire, you need a fire station near where you live. The more expensive the fire station, the bigger its radius of effect. You can see I've got the whole town covered here by these just two fire stations. Police, I've got one big police station in the middle of the screen and over to the right side of my town, I've got these two little ones which cover a small little area each. And if I didn't have those there, then like with sewage and water, this area wouldn't be green, there'd be high crime rates, people would move out, your sims would be unhappy. And as you progress with different levels, they provide you different services you have to provide. Now the interesting thing there is you end up having to really carefully move your buildings around to make sure every apartment is covered by all the services while at the same time not taking up so much space that you need tons more services. So you want to restrict, you want to keep the services as dense as possible so you can have apartment buildings as dense as possible so you can save money. And that's a really careful balancing act. Now there's two other special types of service I wanted to show you. They're called specializations. They're not required. Without them, at points, your sims will get unhappy. But you see these big blue bars? They represent the population change that having parks have on the city. I don't have any education, but I also have transportation. You can see the bus depot down here. And that the transportation I have, which is just, I think, two buildings, increases my population by almost 12,000. Now, why is that good? Well, let's explain now how you can earn money through a variety of different ways. Now, why is a better population, a higher population, good? You'll see here down at the City Hall, there's this revolving coin. This is where we collect taxes. I've just collected 319. If I tap on the hall, you'll see that because my Sims are happy, they're paying 20% of tax, and because I've got 65,000, 20% of tax of whatever they're doing translates to 10,000 simoleons in 24 hours. So this is a main way that a bigger town means you get more money. And more money means you can you know, buy the new stores and the new waste sewage plants or power stations that you need. Another way of earning money is things like down here. Things, people will come in and say they want to buy randomly things from you for different amounts of money. Now, good is a super cheap, so I only get nine. You can get up to a thousand or more from selling individual items that you create in the factories and the stores. So that's a really good way of boosting the amount of simoleons you have. None of this have an, has an impact on Sims cash. Down here we have the dock. Every six hours a cargo ship comes, and if I create nails, measuring tapes, and minerals, I'll be able to, in five hours time, stock that up, get money for selling each of those, and that's how I earn the keys that build new uh, transport facilities or other types of facilities. So at least it tells you what you should spend your time making to get ready. Yeah, it doesn't tell you how many of them you'll need, but if you, so far none of them have needed more than three or four. So if you build, you've got enough time to build a backlog so you can make, you can make time pretty quickly and probably net maybe a thousand in cash and then a key and the keys obviously help just make those buildings. Now on outside of the city there's a few different buildings. Two of them you can use now. One of them down in the bottom is for selling your goods and you can create a new sale. For instance you can sell bricks, set the price whatever you want and put it on sale. Likewise what I, I've just advertised a brick. I can go and see people from all over the world, not people I'm friendly with necessarily, so uh, like not friends, on, not friends on Facebook or something. Yeah, not Facebook friends, nothing from Game Center. They just I advertise my thing. Someone else around the world advertise theirs, and you can go to their town and if it's still available, purchase whatever it is. You can see one of this thing right at the end is eight hundred. So there's a lot of money you can make there too. So again, if you put the time in to build the more value high assets, raw materials or goods, you can sell them and make money. The only way you can earn cash is from achievements. And if you go down to that one of the city buildings, you can see the different achievements you have. There's a quite a wide range. 
And if you, you know, if I were to get to 70,000, for instance, I'd earn 18. So this takes, you know, maybe two days. To uh, save you 18 minutes of time on yeah. something. Yeah. So it really, and there's no other way of earning cash in-game other than doing those things. Because you right at the end, unleash five disasters, you get three. I think you get three for the first one disaster. So that's the only way you can do it, and it takes a really long time. The only final twiddly bit of the game I wanted to show you is that the initial city you get is in this limit by this small dotted line. You can see this big dotted line. That's how big your city can get if you pay to expand it. And they cost these different implements. And how you get those implements is either pay money or by tapping on these thought bubbles from your sims. They'll very occasionally give you one of those items if you build them up over time you can then expand your city. So the question is, do you enjoy playing this game? <sighs> I think I think it's got... Oh, look, I've sold something. It's got that kind of thrill where you can sell something and there's a bit of wheeler dealing to it. But what's that phrase or cookie clicker? Cookie uh, clicker, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of clicking to build things. There's some strategy or tactics to make sure you're building the raw materials that you'll need to build the next chair that can get you the next upgrade, that can get you more sims. But yeah, it's all just a lot of clicking and a lot of patient waiting. If you want to play this for sort of 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, and that's it for you know a month on end, you will slowly grow and your town will do okay, but it's just not very fulfilling. Like The best things about Sims free play for me are the creativity and designing the houses and kind of the emotional interaction by building the stories up around your sims. Yeah, I think I definitely am someone who prefers the micro level of play that you get with Sims Free Play, where you can, yeah, get inside the houses and do interior design, and you can control sims and create stories with them. I'm not sure that I'm such a fan of macro level play like this, where you manage a city. It's just not really for me. It might be for somebody else, but not for me. Yeah, and I think the macro play is just a little bit lacking. It's, it is really simplified, which I like. It's impressive how simple they've got it, uh, so that almost anyone can come to it, but it just doesn't give me enough depth, like SimCity does on the PC, or a new game called City Skylines does on the PC and Mac. There you are, constantly managing, trying to improve things. You can design beautiful towns and cities that look amazing. Here you're so restricted. So I think, yeah, one of my thoughts I said earlier, if you could spend time maybe playing with the individual buildings to make them nicer from the outside, that would be a way of doing it. Or maybe having more sculptures, you can make your city on a mountain. Uh, those are sort of twiddles that would be aesthetic but give it an extra edge. But for me, it's just a little bit too simplistic, too slow, too much clicking, and ultimately just feels a bit cold and empty to me. Well, we'll see how you feel in a week or so. Maybe, you know, you'll fall in love with the game and your town will be much bigger. Or maybe you'll have burnt your town to the ground. Who knows? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there is something about it, like with these clicker games, that is just a little bit addictive. So I want to try and go cold turkey for a little bit and just earn some money in the background. What I will say is that doing that will not, as it would with Sim City proper, my town will not burn into the ground without me there. In the background, you can earn money, but your sims, if they're all in equilibrium like they are now, then they're going to stay in equilibrium until I make a change, until I upgrade a building or move a fire station. And that is, that's pretty good, so I know I can go and leave it, make money, and come back and see how I want to get into it in the future. So that's it for this review of SimCity Build It. Hopefully, it's given you some insights about the game if you haven't already played it, and if you have played it, maybe a couple of tips. Or you know, maybe you have a very different opinion to me. Maybe you agree. If so, please do let us know in the comments. And please do like the video because it helps support us and means we can create more videos for you going forward. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this, to subscribe to our channel too so you can stay up with the latest videos as and when they become available. Thanks for watching.